This module is about moderators, and we're going to deal with continuous, categorical, and both at once models. One of the nice things about metaphor is that it's easy to include moderators in the model. You can have both, as I said before, continuous and categorical moderators and do some other stuff too. Um, the way that you introduce a moderator in metaphor is the mods command. And you don't need to do anything for continuous variables. That's the default. And you have to identify uh, categorical variables using the factor label. Or if you want to uh, dummy code your own, you can do that as well, in which case you wouldn't use the factor label. So there are basically two ways to use the mods command. You can say mods equals C bind mod 1, mod 2, mod 3, whatever you've got that... If you created them or you coded them specially, if you if you dummy code, that's the way you'd want to do it. Or you go mods equals tilde mod one plus mod two plus mod three. And if one of those were a uh, categorical variable, you'd say factor mod one, for example. Um, there are two different models for the categorical variables, and their interpretation is different, so you need to know which is which. If you use the command minus one after the variable that's designated as categorical, then uh, the, the intercept will be suppressed. And the test of the coefficients will be an omnibus test of the null that all the levels of the moderator are simultaneously zero. And that's analogous to ordinary regression, checking the overall R square before you checking any before you check any individual coefficient. So if you leave out the minus one command, which is the typical state of affairs, then one category will be set to the intercept, well, that is, it'll be coded zero, and the um, subsequent categories will estimate the difference between the reference or intercept mean and the mean of the level, whatever that level that is. And I'll show you in the output what that looks like. Um, and this is the test of the significance of the difference uh, by category. So this is what most people want when they think of a test for a moderator. So is the mean for the men different than the mean for the women, for example? You can include a, a categorical and continuous in the same model. You can test for nonlinearity. You can test for interactions, uh, quadratic effects, stuff like that. However, having said you can do all these great things, and there usually is a rather small number of effect sizes or studies in your meta-analysis. And usually there are lots of potential moderators and lots of potential tests. So you want to consider both the type 1 and the type 2 errors before you start. If you run a mixed model, so you have um, the typical case where you've run a random effects model and you have covariates, you can ask for... Uh, Omnibus and individual tests of the coefficients based on distributions of f and t rather than chi-square. So you're going to um, deal with the uncertainty of the estimate of tau-square. So there's, a, there's some fudge in the estimate of tau-square. And the smaller number of studies you have, regardless of how, how big your samples are, the, the more fudge there is going to be in your estimate of tau-square. So uh, what you can do is this adjustment called Knapp and Harding. You say KNHA equals true if you want that. So if you take that, then you'll get uh, T and F instead of uh, chi-square and Z. Typically, it's a more conservative test. I'm going to show you a data set uh, by uh, McLeod 2007. And um, what you got there is uh, correlations between um, parenting and childhood depression. And I'm going to run several different analyses so you can see how these options work. First case will be no moderator, a simple overall analysis relating the uh, parenting to childhood depression. Second one, I'm going to add the categorical moderator, clinical diagnosis of the child, yes or no, as a, as a moderator. And then I'm going to uh, introduce the Knapp and Harding adjustment to that same analysis. And then I'm going to get rid of Knapp and Harding, but I'm going to now um, suppress the intercept so you see the difference in the test for the categorical variable. And last, I'm going to have uh, add the uh, continuous moderator age, so we'll have two independent variables, one categorical and one continuous in the analysis. Here's the R code. 
I'm loaded uh, metaphor. I've loaded XLSX. And now I'm reading McLeod data. And I'm reading that McLeod 2007 XLSX from uh, my uh, desktop. And I'm going to put that into a data set called McLeod that. I've got author year N. So I'm going to need that. Age, the mean age of the children in the uh, study. I'm going to use that. DX was the child uh, given a clinical diagnosis, yes or no. I'm going to use that. And what else have we got in here? R, the correlation between parenting and childhood depression. So um, we're going to use that. Z and V, I computed for another purpose, and we're not going to use that. First analysis, McLeod results one gets, this is um, metaphor, N sub I equals N, R sub I equals R, method is Dersimonian and Laird, measure is Z course, so I'm using the R to Z transformation data McLeod DAP. And then uh, here it is. So we've got tau is about 11, which is the medium tau for correlations. Um, I squared 72. The overall mean is uh, 27. And there isn't much R to Z adjustment at this point. So it's about what it would be in R as well. Standard error is 02 goes from 23 to 31, or our confidence interval for um, this meta-analysis. All right, so now we want to introduce a uh, moderator. And you can see I've kept N and R. Z core, and now I've got mods equal. And now I've got uh, tilde, which in my keyboard is upper left near the escape key. Um, and factor, notice factor is not capitalized. DX, DX is capitalized because uh, it, it's capitalized here. And you, metaphor is case sensitive, so I need to say that. And data is McLeod debt. So I've got one categorical moderator. It's categorical because I told it factor. Now I've got tau is 11. Uh, I square is about 72. Uh, R square, the amount of heterogeneity you count for is 3.27. So uh, by introducing the um, clinical diagnosis into the analysis, I've accounted for part of the random effects variance here. Not a whole lot, but some. Um, residual heterogeneity is still significant. Test of the moderators. All right, so this is a test of coefficients too, and uh, that's this. Okay, coefficient two, um, not two coefficients, but the second coefficient. The Q value is 4.4, P value is 03, it's less than 05, so this is significant. This intercept is this 2522, two, two. that's the value of uh, the correlation when there's no diagnosis. And the, when they, the diagnosis is yes, then the correlation increases by 1268. So, a, about a 0.13 increase in the correlation, which is, in correlation units, that's actually a pretty big difference between two groups of, of 0.13. So, uh, and you can see that the confidence interval here doesn't include zero for either of these. So, that is the interpretation of that one. And now we'll go to the third, and we've got the same RMA, N, R, D, L, Z core mods equal factor dx, so the same one, and now I'm going to use the Knapp and Harding adjustment because uh, I have less than 100 studies, and so there's going to be some fudge in my estimate of tau squared. Uh, when I do that, I have the same, this is exactly the same as it was before. This is not, however, the test of the moderator, test of the model, not significant. And here we've got exactly the same estimates, but here we have t values, and up here we have z values, and you see the t values are smaller, and thus p goes from significant here to non-significant here, and you see the confidence interval actually contains zero for this. So when we um, when we used the Knapp-Harding adjustment, uh, we went from being significant to not. The um, so I've gotten rid of the Knapp-Harding adjustment now, and I've got 
I've gone back and I've looked at the, the categorical moderator diagnosis, and now I put that minus one uh, command in there. And when I do that, the um, test of the coefficients one and two, it's now testing these two. And here's factor diagnosis no, here's factor diagnosis yes. And so what it's saying here is that uh, this is the omnibus test of the significance of the set of these things. So individually, they are significantly different from zero, which is just what you'd expect. But as a set, they're also significantly different from zero. So this is like the test of R-square in a typical regression model where you, you first look at the overall R-square to see if that's significant. And if it is, then you're entitled to uh, look at the coefficients. And if it's not, then <laughs> these the, the significant ones here are likely to be type 1 errors. Um, then uh, lastly, so I've got the uh, same input, same data, but now mods, I've got um, diagnosis plus age. And you notice age uh, was that the mean age of the children in the sample, and that's a continuous variable, so I don't do anything to it. I just leave it alone, and by default, it's going to treat it as a continuous variable. When uh, I uh, do that, uh, I've got a really ugly amount of uh, heterogeneity accounted for here. Still heterogeneous with two degrees of freedom, and it's testing coefficients two, three. Together, we have a p-value of 0.1. It's not significant, and even though the intercept in this are um, significant, the uh, age is not, and when you put them all together, the overall model is no longer significant. So um, what I showed you was a meta-analysis where we have a categorical moderator uh, and a model with a categorical and a continuous moderator, and uh, also showed you the Knapp-Harding adjustment. And that's it.